Hey guys, what up? So we're talking about MongoDB in this video, and I'm going to try to quickly get you guys up and running with it. MongoDB is a little bit more complicated um, compared to other SQL databases that you may have used just because it's so different. Um, it's not even SQL. It's actually considered NoSQL. So it's nothing like MySQL or any of that other stuff. What you need to do, though, if you want to get set up with uh, MongoDB, I'm on Windows, but this would apply to basically anywhere, um, any system that you're using. You're going to go to Google and then uh, go to MongoDB, and MongoDB is going to have an actual installer, so you can go here to download MongoDB. And then you've got all the different environments here covered. So Windows, you can grab the 32-bit version um, or 64, it doesn't matter, um, whatever sort of system you want. I'm on uh, Windows 8, so I'm going to be using the 64-bit version. Once you download and install MongoDB, it's going to put the project by default. If you didn't mess with um, where it gets installed, if you're using Windows, it's going to put it in uh, C colon pro, uh, program files, and then down in uh, MongoDB, and then you can see it's inside this MongoDB server. So let's go ahead and uh, navigate uh, to this particular directory in your command prompt. So open up your, your command prompt in Windows. And we're going to go see uh, program files, C space Mongo DB. All right, so now we're inside this MongoDB directory after it's been installed. If you want to be able to use MongoDB, you actually need to be able to turn it on. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if we go into uh, the directory, and then let's go ahead and go into the server folder, and now into the 3.0 folder, and then into the bin folder. And then here you're going to see a bunch of executable files, which uh, mean program files and uh, Windows. If you type Mongo, it's actually going to run um, your Mongo shell. But the reason why I was mentioning uh, that we're going to have to do something in order to be able to use it is because you can see that we get an, an exception connection failed. What this means is that your Mongo server is not actually running, so you can't even connect to it. So if you're going to be running your Mongo server, you need to go ahead and go into this 3.0 bin folder and you can either use Windows or you can use the command prompt but you need to run the Mongod uh, or MongoD application so this Mong, Mongod is the way they, I pronounce it um, so anyway just double click on that and it's going to actually start your Mongo server on port 27017 which is the default MongoDB port so now that you've done that you can go back to your command prompt now you can actually run Mongo without the D, just the Mongo, and it's going to actually go into your um, your Mongo database setup. And here is your shell. So one of the things with uh, MySQL, if you've ever done that and you've used like a, a GUI, like a you know a, a basically a web a website type of thing that's built on top of the database to be able to click and drag and and view things visually, you typically don't do that with MongoDB. You're mostly using uh, the actual databases. So what if you want to see what databases you have available, you say show DBS. And you can see in this particular Mongo installation that I have, I have two. I have this Intel 401 and I have local. Local is actually the default and will come with your Mongo installation. If you want to use a database, you just simply say use and then the name of the database. So now it says I've switched to this um, uh, DB Intel. Now, if I want to actually see uh, what sort of tables are in this Intel 401 database that I've switched to, I would say uh, DB dot um, collection. I'm sorry, show. Just say show collections, actually. And you can see in this particular uh, Intel 401, I have two. I have accounts and then system dot indexes. So if I wanted to see everything inside of the accounts table, I could just say DB for the DB that I'm using, which is Intel 401. And then I'll, I'll say the actual collections, which is accounts. And then I'll just say dot find and open and close parenthesis. And that's actually going to query all the elements um, inside of the um, of the, the database there. So if I wanted to specifically give it a, uh, a lookup, I could do that. So I could say username and then equals uh, test. I believe that's going to find something. And I actually did this wrong. That's a, a syntax error. This needs to be inside of a JavaScript object. So what that means is that you're passing in uh, basically a dictionary, which is uh, what a JavaScript object is, or a key value. So here's the key. Uh, I'm saying username equal test. So you can see it actually did find 
uh, this particular example because if you look um, the username equals test so that's actually how you query something uh, in MongoDB if you wanted to just pull one record back say there's there could be multiple matches and you just want one you could say find one and that does the same thing and it'll bring back the one object um, so a lot of times that's what you want because find might come back with a bunch of different objects if uh, if there were more than one match now another thing that's really weird about Mongo is I actually don't have to use um, accounts. Like say I want to actually build a table where I could say db uh, test dot and then um, I can do insert. So I'll just say uh, insert and then inside the, if I could spell that right. So inside of the parentheses I'll do the curly brace for the JavaScript object and I'll just say uh, key value All right, so now it says it right it right resulted inserted into one. So now if I go ahead and I say show collections, you can see that there's now a test table. So just like that with MongoDB, there was no table there named test before, but now there is. So if I went ahead and I said uh, db dot test dot find, it'll find all records for the test. So it's actually going to pull back the object that we just added, so this key value, and it could have been any particular thing we wanted. So here's db test two. And we'll say and and say things get more complicated. So we'll say uh, key one, or say you're saying it, this is a band, right? So we'll say um, it's a band object. In fact, I'll, I'll make this a band table. So say we're doing a, a band here. So we're adding a name. Uh, I'll add uh, the name Bayside, which is a cool band that I like. Um, we'll say origin, like where they come from, New York. And then we'll say um, origin and then um, genre, and they're kind of like uh, alternative, basically. All right, so if I went ahead and I entered that, so we in, we went ahead and we entered. So let's go ahead and look at all the um, records in the band. So we'll say db.band.find. And it's going to come back with this new Bayside band object that we just created. So the thing about MongoDB compared to a SQL database is that you can just build your tables on the fly um, where my where my sequel you have to do mag migrations if you change your date your actual table structure your your um your item structure and these items that we're inserting can be thought of as um, records or documents and typically they're referred to as documents so they're very flexible as far as how they're laid out so with name origin genre that's all part of your schema if you're using something like a sql database like mysql when you define your schema it becomes very difficult to change that schema um, with all the existing data that might already be in the database but with mongodb it's a lot more flexible so um, anyway that's a, one of the main reasons for using mongodb as well as the fact that it's already in json format because this all can just be thought of as a json object and then there's also the fact that mongodb can scale very well so Normally with a MySQL setup, you have to set up like a cluster and a server farm. It's very difficult to get My, MySQL to be able to, um, you know, share the load amongst a bunch of different servers. Now you can do it, but you have to be very uh, talented at it. With MongoDB, it was actually made with the mindset that you could just pretty much add some more server instances and that it's all just going to work um, without actually having to do a lot of uh, crazy setup. So that's really the number one reason to use MongoDB. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and look at then how we actually uh, delete a, a collection. So I was actually showing this example of how you delete a collection. I realized that the recorder was paused, so I had to add these two values back in. But anyway, if we wanted to delete a, a collection, all we have to do is say uh, db and then the name of the collection dot drop open and close parentheses. So this will go ahead and drop the, the test table and we'll get true back. And then I'll do the same thing for the band table. Um, that I showed you guys. So now if I, I go ahead and I look at the collections, you can see that the two collections, band and test, are now dropped, and that was uh, that easy to do it. And I want to keep the video under 10 minutes here, so uh, please rate, uh, rate up if you would, and subscribe to my channel for more information like this, and I appreciate all the uh, followers and everybody that watches my videos and everything. I definitely appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye.